Hey, Happy New Year. Um, let's talk about the new year. Let's talk about creating change as it intersects with moving through cycles. Um, two things I talk a lot about and I aim to live, um, sometimes gracefully, sometimes horrifically um, awkwardly through my life. So I wanted to think about, I wanted to talk about it with you today because I'm getting a ton of questions from my clients about, you know, we went through New Year's, okay, here we go. And, and like New Year's has that energy of um, new beginnings and fresh starts and here we go and clean, you know, clean journal pages and planning and goals. And I get that. I am no stranger. I'm a very ambitious woman. I am no stranger to starting lines as a former runner and triathlete. You should see me when a starting gun goes off. I just charge. My midwife joked when uh, I was finally given the go-ahead to push with our first child after I was fully dilated. It was like a starting gun went off, and I didn't even wait for a contraction. So I want to talk to you about um, working with the cycles of your life versus what has been superimposed on top of you. Because in the absence of awareness of your cycles, you're going to naturally adopt what you have been taught, what you have been told, what you have been given. And there's a lot of uh, our economy has a vested interest in that. It moves things forward. We buy when we have those superimposed structures on top of us. So let's talk about what happens for us when it turns January every year. So the first thing, so I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to give you some ways to think about it. And then I'm going to give you three things to try that might open you to a different way of being um, with the beginning of the year. So three things to experiment with that would flex potentially some different muscles for you. So thinking about the new year, the first thing I'd have you consider is, is it your new year? Or is it our new year? Uh, because the ball dropped and we all toasted and, and the calendar page went off. And we're now writing you know, checks and looking at things that say 2024. Is it your new year? And it seems like a simple question to ask, but it's an important question to ask because it's never felt like January is the start of my new year, ever. Um, my, I was born November 1st, so my birthday from September, like when, when kids go back to school, the academic year, and when the, the harvest comes in, and then everything sort of gets brown, that's when I came into the world, right after Halloween. And that is the beginning of my new year, which intellectually makes sense because it literally was the beginning of my new year way back, you know, 55 years ago when I came into this world. So your birthday is a good place to look. Another place to look is um, for people who are, who are teachers and who have young children, you know, ask, ask any parent, ask any mom um, what – the, when the new year feels like it hits, and it's generally when the kids go back to school. And so there's our training. We all have this imprinted calendar year of schools, which interestingly is getting removed as more and more schools are seeking to go to school year round. You feeling that? So we're, we're losing our summers, almost like, you know, we can, as women, we can take pills to just make our cycles like go away. Um, so that's interesting. So the but the academic cycle for us, you know, we we have the fall semester, then we have this the spring semester, then we have a summer break, and then we have new year, new pencils, new notebooks, new classes, new teachers, new students. You know, September feels like that's the start of a new year. Um, for some people, the um, projects like big events, moving into a house. Um, the death of a loved one, um, the birth of a new member of your family, um, the the release of a of a book of a project. Um, maybe you you wrote a book and you things came to fruition, and maybe it happened in like, you know, June, or maybe it happened in October. That is your sort of new year. Where you were before is different than where you are now. It is a completion of a cycle. So the first thing I'd have you look is, like, what is your cycle that you move through? And if you don't know, 
that's okay. I didn't either. Just start tracking it and be curious. Often the only thing you have to do is to start to consider, huh, I never really thought about that. And then you just start noticing how you move through the year. You can track it, create a wheel of the year, make a circle, make the pieces of the pies, put the months at the top, and just note activities you do, moods you have, things that you do, and you'll start to see, wow, I'm actually pretty predictable and I move through this cycle um, pretty predictably every year. So that's the frame that I'd offer you because in the absence of that, you're going to look at January as your new year. And it can be like a mismatch. So all of my work is aligning individually and, and um, with my clients, is aligning what you desire um, with your actions and your behaviors and your choices and your how you show up. You just want to create more and more alignment and that's how you're true to yourself, creating alignment. And so, yeah, so look at, because the, there can be this discord that happens for people of like, all right, New Year's resolutions, and, you know, I need goals, and I need to set plans. And while I'm not knocking that, and I'm not telling you not to have ambition, I do want you to think broader and beyond what we have been told. Because how many of you are in the process, or maybe you are in the process year-end of writing, you, you did the year-end reviews in the corporate world, and then you have to write the plans. And everybody, it has that energy to it of just say some words and put them on paper, but it doesn't really matter. You just need to say you did it. And I want more for us than just going through the motions. I really do. So here are, so you know how to do the conventional stuff. You know how to do the New Year's resolutions. You know how to do the plans. Um, I want to offer you three other really important things I have done personally and that I see my clients have a lot of success with um, over the you know 20 years I've been working with them. Um, the first thing is um, how do you want to feel? So all these things we're doing, New Year's resolutions, goals, uh, mission statements, communication plans, marketing plans, 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 strategies, all of those are designed to have us feel a certain way and to arrive at a feeling which coincides with a place. And But do you know what that feeling is? And so I remember reading um, Daniel Laporte's Firestarter Sessions years ago. I'll put a link in the comments in the uh, description below. And that broke my brain because she said all these things that we're doing are designing us to have us feel a certain way, but so many of us don't know what are those feelings that we are aiming for. Like if we lose 10 pounds, how will that make us feel? Because that's what we're hoping for. And we've attributed the action of losing 10 pounds to connect us with the feelings. And she said, we're all doing it, we're doing it backwards actually. If you start with the feelings, your likelihood of hitting that mark and actualizing that feeling increases if you can start with a feeling. So as an exercise for this year, whatever your year is, ask yourself, pick three words. How do you want to feel in this year? And write them on a sticky note. And here's my invitation is be specific with your words. Watch out for general words like healthy. Great word, not knocking it, but what does it mean? Because feelings are super personal words, and words are really powerful. So let's use healthy as an example. Yeah, okay, so healthy could mean, it could mean like your cholesterol is down, you're, um, you, you're 10 pounds later, you're, you're, you're happier. You're, it could mean a whole bunch of things. What do you want it to mean? What do you want? How do you want to feel? So get healthy in that example in your body and see if you can access it. Is it alive? Is it vital? Is it electric? Is it juicy? You know, because your body will know. So be specific with your three things. Write those three things on the word, on the, on a sticky, put them on your, on your mirror while you're brushing your teeth and just live with them a little bit. Change your mind. Take one out. Notice which ones make you feel exhausted. Notice which ones make you feel like, ugh, like a, a should. And just edit them over that time. But use those as your three bearings. So those will be, that's your aim. Those are your bearings. That's one tool. The second tool is um, exercising your imagination. 
your, your ability to imagine. So when we set goals, when we do plans, we, what we're really doing is imagining our way into the future, but we're doing it with just our heads. And we are, we are often told not to enact the artistry of change, which is imagining. And so I think those, my experience in myself and in my clients is that muscle is so atrophied in our society. We are not taught, we are not given a lot of tools to exercise them. So when we daydream as kids and we stare off at the sky, or when we daydream as, as, as adults, we're told, pay attention, focus because you're not being productive. And what you are doing in that moment is you are accessing something that's really going to create more alignment with who you are and how you're living your life and what you want. And so exercise your imagination. And here's how that might look, some examples of um, keep a note in your phone. Have this being an ongoing thing, not like you know a one-off exercise that you do in January of your year. Like any muscle, it needs um, care and feeding, otherwise it atrophies. So keep a note in your phone that's like, wouldn't it be cool if, or wouldn't it be amazing if, or have a page in your journal and turn the, the edge down so that you're coming, com coming back to it constantly and you're creating a list and you're just adding to the list. You know it would be really cool? You know it would be, you know be awesome? You know it would be great? You know it would be like crazy? Um, and you're just gathering these little glimmering breadcrumbs of imagination, which when you get a pile, start to form a life. And if you're in doubt about this, um, all I want to point you to is physics. There's, just, there's science behind it. There's artistry, um, and it can feel like some, like you're casting a spell, but really it's also physics. So like attracts like, and where attention goes, energy flows so that's all you're doing is you're desiring something I'll use an example of last year I took myself on my first solo adventure ever my first solo trip I've done lots domestically but I'd never gone to Europe and I've talked about this before but I, I took myself to Portugal and I did not see that coming so some of the best things I did not know to want but my imagination was like, wouldn't it be cool if I could walk around a city and my time would just be myself and I could just follow where I want to go and not worry about other people's schedules or anything like that. And I, it's somewhere in my mind's eye, I must have just had this vision of me walking, in, you know, walking around a city. And I, I found my way into it without even realizing it. So imagination. The, um, it's a muscle and just flex it. That's number two. Number three, here's something I've played with. And, you know, I'm a big fan of to-do lists. I have, I have a book for to-do lists. So my day book, I have my schedule in my phone, but my day book is for my to-dos so that I can get it out of my head and get it down on paper and I can put it somewhere. So I'm not worrying about something that I don't need to worry about until March. I can put it in March. So I love to-dos and I love the lists not knocking them. And a couple of years ago, I started doing a done list. So on one page, I have a to-do list. And on the other page, I have a done list for each week. And I just started and I called it yay me. <laughs> and I would put stuff on it like I had an hour and a half conversation with a really good friend without planning it. It just happened. I sat in the, yesterday, I sat in the sun with my mom yesterday because we had the first sunny day in Maine in a while. And I took the dogs and I went over and I sat in the sun with my mom. Did not plan that. Just sort of, wow, I was so grateful. Yay me. Um, you know, things that you didn't set out to do, they weren't on your, they're the sort of things you might write on your to-do list afterwards and then cross them off. So create a done list because now you are starting to reinforce that muscle of trust. Can I trust myself without a plan, without goals, without, you know, it's, it's, it's like really embedded in us. It, you can see it playing out at work. Can I trust that if I don't have to be at work in an office at nine o'clock, will I still work? Yeah, yeah, you will. You'll still be productive and we're finding our way into that. But what this done list does 
is it is it exercises your ability to function and to focus and to be productive and to move through life without guardrails. And so the done list starts to be like, holy, holy moly, look at everything that I've done. So that's what I've got for you as we start this maybe new year. Um, because the shoulds come up pretty big right now of like, what would you do for? At a time when a lot of people are exhausted and tired. And for me personally, January and February and to some degree March, that is my time of year of imagination, which is why I wanted to do this because I'm really in it right now. And I'm, that is my time of reflection and taking stock. The trees are all, the leaves are all off the trees so I can see the tree itself and I can take stock um, of where I am and I can access my heart and I can listen for my soul and it's just a time of reflection. And I do a lot of that work with my clients um, because that is what grows a beautiful garden that means something to you and not just to us. So thought I'd offer that in case you were feeling the feels over there and feeling pressure to sort of do something. If you had this feeling, uh, and you were like wanting to try something different, you can still have the conventional way, but I wanted to offer you an unconventional way and play with both. So happy new year too. Bye. <laughs>